Hello. Again, welcome to this uh, new edition or different of uh, Wings of Hope. My name is Reverend Randall Johnson, and I come to you today with a very sad and broken heart. As a United States Marine who, have, who has fought for and defended the rights of this country, it breaks my heart to see that this country does still, still does not respect the rights and the privileges of every citizen that I fought for. And I speak for every veteran, active and retired who either in Arlington or bedside or watching this video it's somewhat heartbreaking that if I'm in the wrong place at the wrong time, I could be just like George Floyd or Ahmaud Arbery. And the police won't check to see if I fought for this country, for the rights that they're to protect, to ensure that everyone gets to enjoy this land of the free and home of the brave. I'm heartbroken that my brothers and sisters of my own race feel it's necessary to tear up and to um, destroy. Even though I understand after 400 years of oppressive slavery and discrimination, we still are not respected as citizens. But I'm also heartbroken because whites are probably thinking that are not of the mindset that every other race is inferior to them, are lost and wondering what can they do to let people like me who fought for this country know that they don't agree with what's going on. Well, today I wanted to give a message that's applicable to both white America, black America, Hispanic Americans, Asian Americans, and that often forgotten group, the American Indians, a message of hope that we might think about to get us from this point of hatred to a point of healing quickly. And I'm hoping that this message will do just that. If you have your Bibles, would you please open them to Luke, the 16th chapter. We'll be reading selected verses 19 through the 31st verse. And they now, there was a certain man and he was clothed in purple and fine linen living in luxury every day a certain beggar named Lazarus was laid at the gate full of sores and desired to be fed with the crumbs that fell from the rich man's table yes even the dogs came and licked his sores. It happened that the beggar died and that he was carried away by the angels to Abraham's bosom. But the rich man also died and was buried. In Hades, he lifted up his eyes, being in torment, and saw Abraham far off and Lazarus at his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue for I am in anguish in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that you in your lifetime received your good things and Lazarus in like manner bad things. But now he is comforted 
and you are in anguish. Beside all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, that, there, that those who want to pass from here to you are not able, and that none may cross over from there to us. Then the rich man said, I ask you therefore, Father, that you would send him to my father's house for I have five brothers that he may testify to them so that they won't come to this place of torment but Abraham said to him they have Moses and the prophets let them listen to them he said no father Abraham but if one goes to them from the dead they will repent and he said to him if they don't listen to Moses and the prophets neither will they be persuaded if one rises from the dead please pray with me father God in the name of Jesus there are those who don't believe of the God of the Bible father they only believe possibly that you are the higher power. I don't know where your son falls or where the Holy Ghost even falls in that hierarchy. But God, we need you. We need you right now. We need you to help us in the healing process, not the hatred process, for the humanity that you created. Father God, I ask that you please come right now and give me the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart that it will be acceptable in thy sight. For the families of Ahmad Aubrey and the families of George Floyd and all the other American families, white, black, Hispanic, Asian. Father, we need you. We need you like we've never needed you before. For the reasons that they even came up and ratified with the motto, Iblis U E Pulimus Ruham. Out of many, there are one. We know that came from you. We ask that you please remind us of that, Lord, as we enter into this thought, a spiritual checkup. In the precious, holy, and righteous name of the one who's able to keep us from falling, we pray. Amen. Helen Steiner Rice, and I say Helen Steiner Rice, my favorite poet, poet said, This too shall pass. If I can endure for this moment whatever it is happening to me, no matter how heavy my heart is or how dark the moment may be, if I can remain calm and quiet with all the worlds crashing about me, secure in the knowledge God loves me when everyone else seems to doubt me, if I can but keep on believing what I know in my heart to be true, that darkness will fade in the morning and that this shall pass away too, that nothing in life can defeat me, for as long as this knowledge remains, I can suffer whatever is happening. For I know God will break all of the chains that are binding me in the darkness and trying to fill me with fear. For there is no night without a dawning. And I know that my morning is near. A spiritual checkup. A spiritual checkup. It was Mahatma Gandhi who said that you must be the change you wish to see in the world. 2020 will be the year that COVID-19 pandemic is evident that humanity is not only needs each other, but it will also be the year that humanity finally realizes that both life and death realities that no one 
can ignore. And I mean life or death realities. No one can ignore. 2020 will also be the year that humanity will realize that as human, that as a human race, we all need a spiritual checkup. COVID-19 pandemic has made every nation on planet Earth come to realize and recognize it. Yes, and they must realize on both that both scientists and doctors and nurses to help us to deal with, survive, and yes, even overcome this deadly and infectious disease known as the coronavirus disease. However, there at the same time, every nation on planet Earth, especially in the United States of America, with over 100,000 deaths as a result of the coronavirus. And yes, we must also recognize the deadly virus of the virus known as racism that has taken the life of Ahmaud Aubrey and George Floyd. There is definitely a need for a spiritual checkup. Theologian, activist extraordinaire, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, it was he who spoke out against the injustice of Hitler, Adolf Hitler, I might add, and the Third Reich. And he understood all too well the importance of a spiritual checkup long time ago when he declared, there remains, and I quote, there remains an experience of incomparable value. We have for once learned to see the great events of world history from below, from the perspective of the outcasts, the suspects, and the maltreated. In short, from the perspective of those who suffer, mere waiting and looking on is not Christian behavior. Christians are called to compassion, to action. We are not to simply bandage the wounds of victims beneath the wheels of injustice. We are here to drive a spoke in the wheel itself. I speak of a spiritual checkup. America, if 100,000 deaths of the coronavirus have not woke us up to the realities that the nightmare of a disease that we cannot destroy or control, and in fact, we know for a fact comes to the terms that it has contaminated us for over 243 years. I speak of the virus of racism, not of the Kenora virus here for a moment. The Kenora virus has only existed for at least six months, but racism virus has existed for over 243 years. America, years of our existence, which can be confirmed by Google and the respected online encyclopedia known as Wikipedia, confirmed that out of 195 countries on planet Earth, America is ranked 38 in existence compared to other countries on planet Earth. And yet we are still burdened with both now the Canara virus and the virus of racism. The 100,000 deaths of the canara virus is evidence that we must get ourselves examined by medical professionals to determine if the test results of this virus are either positive or negative, just to see if we'll stay alive. Unfortunately, because there is no vaccine or medicine to cure this dreaded disease, and the tests are the only result to determine if we seek life or death. We have to have medical attention to get a checkup to see if we have this virus. However, the virus of racism that has killed Ahmaud Aubrey and George Floyd is not recognized to be as dangerous to the American society as a whole, especially to those who are in the position to inflict the horrors of racism and the oppressive acts of evilness from one race to the other. Unfortunately, for 243 years, which is documented in the encyclopedia, known again as Wikipedia, America has operated in the philosophy of white supremacy, which is documented within the Constitution of the United States that the racist belief that the white people are superior 
to people of other races and therefore should be dominant over other races. The Articles of Confederation, Perpetual Union, for the 14, thir for the for, for the 13 original states, states in fact that all, with, that all white male supremacy, and I might emphasize all white male supremacy, women weren't counted within our constitution when they ratified that African people are three fifths of a person, and they did this ratification in November of 1777. However, just five years later, in 1782, the Continental Congress adopted the U.S. motto E Pluribus Unum, for many, there are one. Yes, the issue of class and justifiable murder against lynching slaves then and now, over both the issue of racial superiority and material classism, has been with us since 1777. America, we are in need then of a spiritual checkup. Unlike a medical test now to determine the existence for the Canara virus and also recognize there is no cure for this dread disease, the virus of racism is definitely a spiritual virus because both the oppressor and the oppressed are contaminated with the disease. I speak of both white and black alike, Asian and Hispanic, no human being is can be exempt from this disease known as racism. So this begs the question, Brother Preacher, where can humanity go when both black and white people, particularly within America, are contaminated with this virus of racism? Who can humanity trust to examine humanity thoroughly and diagnose the problems that we are we are contaminated with. Who can give us the right diagnosis and the right cure for this virus of racism? I speak of a spiritual checkup. Well, in our scripture lesson today, Jesus, the son of the living God, points out two causes and also the cure for the virus of racism according to the Gospel of Luke. And the two cure, two causes are awareness, attentiveness, and the cure is accountability. Awareness. It was Plato who declared an unexamined life is not worth living. Satan is the only, only one responsible to convince humanity that we should ignore both the warning and the commandments of Almighty God. It was in Genesis, the third chapter, where Satan, disguised as a serpent, declared, Now the serpent was more than subtle than any other animal of the field which Yahweh could have made. And he said to the woman, Has God not really said, Ye shall not eat of any tree of the garden? The woman said to the serpent, Of the tree, of, of the fruit of the trees of the garden we may eat. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God had said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. The serpent said unto the woman, You won't surely die. For God knows that in the day you eat thereof, your eyes will be open, and you will be like God's, knowing good and evil. Yes, when we sin and go against Almighty God, and think of only ourselves, we become selfish, self-centered, and narcissistic in thinking, just like the rich man in this chapter, who only cared for himself and not even recognized that he had a spiritual connection to the Almighty God who made him or that his spirit was connected to humanity. In other words, if you're not even cognizant and aware that you have a spirit, something's wrong. There needs to be a spiritual check. White people, you have a spirit. Black people, you have a spirit. Hispanic people, you have, you have a spirit, people. And if you don't recognize that you have the spirit, you're like the rich man in trouble. You must be aware. Number two, you must be attentive of that spirit. King Solomon 
the wisest man who ever lived, gives us the cause and the reason why we must be attentive to Almighty God and each other when we are in a spiritual checkup examination. When he declared in Exodus, I'm sorry, Ecclesiastics, the second chapter, 17 to the 26th verse. I won't read it all to you, but I will read the first, the 17th verse, and the 26th verse. The 17th verse says, So I hated life, because the work that worked under the sun was grievous to me, for all is vanity and chasing after the wind. Let me read the 18th verse as well, I'm sorry. And I hated all my labor, which I labored under the sun, seeing that I must leave it to the man who comes after me. For the man who pleases God, I'm reading the 26th verse now, God gives him wisdom, knowledge, and joy, but to the sinner he gives travail, to gather and to heap up, that he may give him who pleases God. This is also vanity and chasing after the wind. America, and I speak to both black and white people alike, of this great land of ours, if you only pay attention to your bank account, your telephone account, and your social media account, and give all of your attention of your life to those accounts, on the day you die, I've got a news flash for you. They won't be going with you. Notice in the 22nd verse of the 16th chapter, something happens to both the rich man and the poor man. They both die. I got news for you. The man or the men who are accused of killing Ahmad Aubrey, they're going to die. The man who put his knee in the back of Floyd, of George Floyd's neck and killed him on the sidewalk, he's going to die. And you know what? Because he wasn't attentive to the person in which he's killing, he's going to have to pay for that. Yes, there is injustice here, but there's going to be a justice after they die. America, when you die, your bank account, your telephone account, nor your media account will go with you to eternity. But how you utilize them will. It will be recorded for review how you lived your life. This is why white people must be attentive to the needs and the basic human rights of black people, the Hispanic people that are trying to get into this country, and the Asian people who feel left out, just be, and, 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 and Asian, black, white, and Hispanic people, let me get say that again, I'm sorry. If the black, Hispanic, and Asian people, you need to understand that all white people are not ignorant and hanging on to the philosophy, to the philosophy of white supremacy. This does not mean that all white people have this mentality. However, there is a God who is waiting to help all of us and give each and every one of us peace if we let him, because God will never force himself on anyone. Now I understand what the Apostle Paul meant when he gave the clarion call to the church in Rome. When he said, beseech you, I beseech you therefore, brother, in the mercies of God, that ye present yourselves, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be ye not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is good and acceptable in the perfect will of God. I'm talking about a spiritual checkup. A spiritual checkup. Last but not least. Accountability. A spiritual checkup requires that you first must become aware that you have a spirit. Secondly, your spirit must be attentive to God and humanity. And then third, which is the solution is that 
it will be held accountable to what you do and don't do. From the 23rd verse to the 31st verse of this great chapter, verses of the gospel according to Luke addresses both justice and accountability and how both the rich man and the poor man had to give an account to how they lived their lives. Again, King Solomon gives humanity a clarion declaration and points out seven things Almighty God hates. This comes from the NIV, as I read, from Proverbs, the sixth chapter, starting from the 17th verse to the 19th verse. God hates haughty eyes, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, uh oh. Proverbs 6:18, a heart that divides wicked schemes, feet that are quick to rush into evil. Proverbs 6:19, last but not least, a false witness that pours out lies, and a person who stirs up conflict in the community. Uh, Mr. President, you might want to back off on what you do on Twitter. I'm talking about a spiritual checkup a spiritual checkup now i understand the psalmist meant when he declared the lord is good a stronghold in the day of trouble and he ignored them that trust in him now i understand the psalmist when he meant and he declared god is our refuge and our strength a very present help in trouble i'm talking about a spiritual checkup today as i leave you i know there are many who do not believe in the God of the Bible that I speak of today. And this is the God qualified to examine and cure and, and the cure for both the Kanar virus and this virus called racism in America. I leave you with some facts about this God of the Bible that you might want to consider. First of all, the Bible has over 100 million copies of the Bible that are sold each year. The Bible is the best-selling book in history, with both total sales exceeding 5 billion copies. The King James Version contains 788,258 words, 31,102 verses, 1,189 chapters, and 66 books. Oh, by the way, no other book has stood the test of time for 3,000 years. However, I stopped it by to tell you on my way to heaven, and I know that traditional religion does not captivate some, and I know those who are out there looting that shouldn't be, don't think that they're gonna be accountable, but I got news for you, you will. I stopped by to tell you and to encourage you and to empower you that you can depend on every word that's in this bible always remember the almighty god is still in charge in control and he still is command there is no problem god cannot solve there is no situation god cannot fix there is no mistake god cannot erase no war god cannot win and there's no death god cannot resurrect back to our life the almighty god knew from the beginning of time, when the honor of heaven had been compromised by Satan, it said that God had a hidden agenda. God knew that every setback is a setup for a comeback. I'm talking about a spiritual checkup. I'm talking about a spiritual checkup. I want to thank you. Jordan and her mother Coco, who own a salon here in Atlanta, to encourage me to give this brief talk about another thought. I know that there are black people who are tired. Dr. Parker, in his sermon, we are tired from Zion Hill Baptist Church is absolutely correct. For 400 years, we've been pushing for the same rights. White people of America, 
I know that all of you out there who are probably bewildered, confused, and some of you have to be heard that if it were your sons that were killed, you're probably wondering, what can you do? It wouldn't hurt to pick up the phone and I think it might be a call for a combined ecumenical service of some sort, both Protestant and Catholic, Jew and Gentile come together and realize that we've had our spiritual checkup, that we do believe in e pluribus room, and that we don't stand for the injustice of the few that they should be the ones like Ahmaud Arbery and George Floyd be victims of racial injustice. I didn't fight for what I see today. I didn't bury my friends who also fought alongside me to see racism still exists and not be accounted for. Black people taking it out on each other, black on black crime, and now not be accounted for. And no one seems to be interested in trying to find a solution to a problem that's a humanity's problem, not a racial one. I ask today, that as you lead this particular broadcast of mine, is that you turn off your phone, you turn off your social media, you go out to a park, to a tree, somewhere away from everything. Close your eyes and talk to this God I'm talking about. I promise you, he'll be there to meet you without no distractions. Leave the phone in the car. Make sure you're not distracted. He's there waiting. But he's the only one. America, he's the only one that can heal the wounds that are deep within our heart. Thank you so much for your time. God bless you, God keep you. And I hope you'll let this God that I speak of in your heart. Let us pray. Father God, I thank you now for this time that we've had, hoping and praying that someone will consider a spiritual checkup with you and get the right spiritual medication, the right vaccinations, but the right insight for the peace that we so desperately need. Thank you, O oh God, for giving us a country that we can express our opinions, good, bad, or indifferent, but know that we can at the end of the day, come to you and ask for guidance, ask for strength, but oh God, ask for peace. In the name of Jesus, we pray, amen. Peace.
proved faithful to me. Every word he's promised is true. What I thought was impossible, I've seen my God do. He's been faithful, faithful to me. Looking There was a certain man, and he was clothed in purple and fine linen, living in luxury every day. Could not pray. A certain beggar Still named Lazarus was laid he at was the gate full of souls to me. and desired to be fed with All the, the days that fell I from the rich Yes, even the dogs came reaching out for what pleased me. It happened that the beggar died. Even then, and that he was carried away by the God was faithful to me. The rich me. man also died and was buried. In every time he I come back, being in torment, and saw Abraham to fall him. off and Lazarus at his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy and send and Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. For I am in anguish in this one. But Abraham said, Son, remember that he is in your lifetime, he is in your wisdom. If they don't listen to Moses and